Welcome to the fifth video in our quadcopter build series three. Now, so far in this series, we've very quickly gone through some of the quite unique things that this flight controller and power distribution board combo provides to us. We're using the Brain FPV RE1 and we're using the MPB power distribution board underneath. Now, for full details on why this is a little bit different from some of the flight controllers we've used before, go and have a look earlier on in the series. But the very quick version is it's an F4 based flight controller. So the processor on here is far more powerful and running at a much faster speed than the F3 flight controllers we normally use. And the other big benefit here is that it has a vector-based on-screen display. Now here in the bottom right-hand corner is a look at what that on-screen display looks like by default. And it actually looks fantastic. It is much nicer than the Minim OSD stuff that we're used to. Because the way the Minim OSD stuff works is that what it's actually doing is using 256 characters, um, A to Z, upper lowercase, and some custom graphics as well to try and provide this same slot of information. And the flight controller that we're looking at here does all that internally and also lets us set everything up in beta flight. So if you are interested in building your own quadcopter and you have never built one before or you've only ever built one before then this probably isn't the series for you. We have two other series on the channel. Series 1 and Series 2 go through everything in an awful lot more detail. This is a series that's designed for somebody with a little bit more experience that's already had two or three builds under their belt and we're really focusing on the stuff that's different about this particular build. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to go and show you how to configure everything in beta flight so it all works. So by the end of the video you'll be able to take it out and give it its first test hover. So the process we're going to go through in beta flight is exactly the same as you would with any flight controller and it's very similar to the quadcopter building for beginners series 2 that we went through. The exception is there's a couple of little wrinkles in here and some extra stuff of course for things like the on-screen display. Now everything that we're going to go through is already covered in quite a little bit of detail in the online instructions and the manual that come with the Brain FPV stuff. So none of the stuff that we're going to cover isn't documented but I thought just going through it and showing it in each individual step everything that we did here to get it all working will help those of you that are building one for the first time. So first of all let me plug the machine into the computer and then we will click connect. So here we are connected to our little flight controller and as I move it around you can see it moving on screen. Now what I'm going to do is go through like I said each of the individual steps here and this is absolutely the way that I have set up pretty much every flight controller in beta flight but there's just an extra couple of wrinkles. I'm going to go through each of the steps here on the right hand side just so you can follow along and again all this stuff is really set up in the manual and this is hopefully just a way for those of you that are more visual learners to kind of keep track of what's going on. A couple of things before we get into the detail you'll notice here that on the right hand side we can see the battery voltage is zero. I haven't got a main flight battery plugged in because I'm just going to show you the steps but we can see how much battery capacity is drawn and uh, how much current it's actually pulling. Okay, so the first step then is to go into the setup tab, is to make sure that your model is absolutely level and click on calibrate accelerometer. We had a little play with that when we were first flashing the board with beta flight and it's a good time, now everything's all together, to just redo it in case the way it's mounted isn't perfectly level. If it's drifting from one side to the other, then I'd definitely come in here and this is one of the things I check, is that it actually is level when you've uh, put it level on your table or desk or whatever it is you're using. Next thing we need to do is go into the ports tab. Now in the ports tab, by default, uh, USB VCP is set to MSP. That sounds like an awful lot of letters, but what that basically means is the USB port is set to talk the multi wee serial protocol. That's actually what we're talking to the board when we connect to it via beta flight with a USB cable. We talk multi wee serial protocol, that's why that's turned on. UART1 is turned on for MSP. That is where all the um, stuff is happening for the on screen display. So, as well as having the USB port there, we also have UART1 there as well. And by having them separate, it means that we can plug the USB port in without uh, having a problem. Then the other port that we've got set up on here is UART3. We've set that up for a serial receiver. When we installed the radio receiver in the last video, we connected it up to three pins, which were at the bottom, which was a five volt and a ground line. If you remember, you can either choose between five volts or 3.3, depending on what you're setting up. And we also then connected up the telemetry pin. 
UART3 is the connector at the bottom of the board that we did all that soldering to. The last little change that you need to make here is if you remember we're using an XSR FR Sky based receiver and we plugged it into UART6's TX pin and I've selected Smart Port Auto. So that means that the telemetry comes back to the radio too, and it does. Once that's done, next one's the configuration tab. The configuration tab, there's a couple of things in here. Uh, obviously make sure that your ESC or motor protocol is correct. We're using one shot 125 based ESCs, so that's what we're going to select. We're not turning on motor stop. We've left all the other bits and pieces standard. There are all of our motor layouts and hopefully you've wired them up in that way with the, the trick that we showed in the last video where you write the number on the servo connector to keep it all tickety-boo. We have enabled serial receiver and selected SBUS, and those are the two things, along with the stuff that we set up in ports, should allow us to configure the receiver. And again, if you were using PPM in here, you'd just select receiver PPM. Uh, then we have VBAT was turned on by default. The voltage scale in here is uh, 66, that's what it has to be for the MPB power distribution board. The current meter wasn't turned on in hours here, we had to enable it and then set the output voltage scale to 250. Again, that's in the manual, just go through and to make sure they're both on. Our current meter wasn't turned on, so it wasn't initially reading the current. Everything else we've left as standard, but we have turned on telemetry so that we can get the telemetry back from the FR Sky receiver as we're flying. We've also turned on black box because it does have a data flash here, has 16 meg of data flash, and it's always useful to look at after the fact. And also you can do some pretty cool stuff through that on-screen display we'll look at in the final video in the series. And we're obviously turned on the on-screen display. We do want to have the OSD activated because that's kind of why we're doing this thing. Now the only other thing you could do here is actually add your craft name. This is where you put it in. So uh, you could put whatever you want to call it, the quadcopter name or your pilot name or whatever, because in the OSD you can have that displayed. So that's everything in the configuration tab. I turn on expert mode at this point and then go into fail safe. In fail safe, make sure that you have your fail safe set up exactly how you want it all to work. Now we have a video that goes through fail safe through every single one of the setups and how they all work. So if you're not familiar with fail safe, go on and watch that video. It kind of explains it. The way this is set up by default is that as soon as there's a problem, after about uh, 0.2 of a second, the thing's going to drop out the sky. So this is quite an aggressive setup. We might tw tweak this later on. The next thing we need to do then is go into the receiver tab. We've not changed any of the PID tuning. We're going to run it on the defaults for the first flights that we do with this thing. Going into the receiver tab, then obviously make sure that your channels are all moving the correct way around. If you find that your throttle is moving another channel and vice versa, it's probably the channel map that you're going to need to change. So do that, make sure you, that you save and refresh it and that everything is settling at 1500 for the midpoint for your roll, pitch and yaw. It doesn't go below 1000 or over 2000 and that you have auxiliary one is what I've got set up here as my mode switch on the radio, setting up for three flight modes, which is the default that I always have it set to. And I'm going to use auxiliary 2 to set up the arming switch. Next thing then is the modes tab. So the way I have it here is the arming switch is auxiliary 2 as we've just looked at. That's set to arm the board and turn it off. Uh, we have air mode. We'll come back to air mode in a second. The three flight modes I have set up is in the low mode position. I get angle. That's quite handy for takeoff and landing. Horizon is the middle switch position that allows us to do flips and rolls and do auto recovery and auto level. And then at the top position, no other modes are set. So what that gives us is rate mode. And I've turned on air mode whenever we're in either horizon or rate. That kind of allows me to land in angle mode without having some of the weirdness you can occasionally get when you land in air mode. Then we went and calibrated the motors. So what you do in here is with the props off, and again, we've stressed this throughout the series, the last thing you do is install the props, so the props should be installed for this thing. With the battery unconnected, you click on, I understand the risks, propellers are removed, you set the master to the top position, you plug the battery in, wait for the tones for the ESCs, immediately drop the master down to the minimum position, wait for the ESCs to confirm that tone, 
and then unplug the battery. And then when you go back in and you ride the master, they should all start at exactly the same time. If they don't, then they probably need recalibrating. Again, if you don't understand exactly what I've just talked about, have a look at the quadcopter building for beginners series one and two. We go through that in an awful lot more detail. Last things to have a look at in here, and this is something that is a bit new, we haven't seen this before, is going into the on-screen display. Now, by default, I haven't got the RSSI set up because there's no RSSI output pin from the XSR that we're using. If there was, I could have my RSSI value as well. We have the main battery voltage showing, the artificial horizon turned on. Now, e these are all the things on the left-hand side that I have selected, and this is where they appear on the screen. So if I try and uh, kind of show you this, so the main battery voltage is up here in the top right-hand corner, and you can actually use the cursor to drag it around let's turn the logo off so we can see what we're doing into any position on the screen and what you do is just decide what you want to have on your osd and then position it onto the screen where you want it make sure that you've either got pal ntsc imperial metric set your alarms click save and it will magically appear on the on-screen display. Now this is really designed for a minimum OSD layout which is why you got these horrible kind of text-based character uh, bars for the artificial horizon and stuff and as we've already looked at the real horizon is actually much nicer because it's a vector-based on-screen display. Now the last thing I'll talk about then is you may need to set BL Heli Suite if when you went into the motors tab and did all that it wasn't calibrating or then the motors won't start once you flash them I would go and have a look at that other video that we talked about use BL Heli Suite to update the ESCs then come back in here and have another go at setting it up by going through each of these individual steps by calibrating the accelerometer setting the stuff in ports doing all of the bits and pieces in configuration to make sure that you're ready, turning on the pieces that we need, going through and setting up your failsafe, receiver, the mode you want, calibrating and setting the motors, and then setting up your on-screen display, you should be ready to go and fly. So the configuration of this F4 board, even though it has some pretty impressive electronics under the covers, is very, very similar to setting up any F3 or F1 based flight controller that we know and love and you've used Betaflight on before. So hopefully that explains exactly what we've done here to get ours ready to rock and roll. If we just go back to the bench, I'll show you one last little thing. We have designed a 3D printable mount for this little guy. Uh, this is one of the brand new updated Runcam V2s. Uh, we're gonna do a review video on this and I'll link to it in the description. But I found that the mount for the camera on this little frame was a little bit aggressive for the way we fly most often. So I have 3D designed this mount. It comes in three pieces and you just weld it together with a bit of acetone. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in going printing one out and you've been following this along. So thanks again to Brain FPV for sending us the flight controller and MPB to put this together. The entire series is on the channel if you want to follow it. And join us for the very last piece of the puzzle because this on-screen display does some pretty fantastic stuff. It allows us to actually view things like the vibration on the frame and look at that histogram in real time. And that's going to be really helpful for setting things like beta flight notch filters to get rid of that noise on the board. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.